Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update February 28th, 2023. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday between 7 and 10 p.m. Pacific Time. This is episode 654 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Justice in the Dark paused uploads at episode 8. Has the drama been suspended? Fan Mingbing makes her comeback in the movie Green Knight. Ellen Run Studio announces zero tolerance for obsessive stalker fans. And Xiao Chan is back on Instagram. But first, here is what's recently premiered two dramas for today and yesterday. There's The Good Time, starring Liam Yen and Nian. The youth drama premiered yesterday, February 27th. It follows a group of high school students who chase after their dreams in the midst of their busy studies and attain friendship and romance in the process. It is slated for 24 episodes and is available on Youku without English subs. Does not look like this one's coming to YouTube. Then there's Once and Forever, The Sun Rises, starring Zhang Zemu, Zhang Kaitai, and Guo Zifan. The youth drama premiered on February 27th as well. It tells the story of family, friendship, and love among several families in a large courtyard in a hutong. The hutong is a type of narrow street or alley commonly associated with northern cities, especially Beijing. The term hutong is also used to describe neighborhoods that are formed of these narrow alleys. Once and Forever, The Sun Rises is slated for 25 episodes and is available on IQ.com with English subs. And that's it for recently premiered dramas. Moving on, an update on Life. Life is an upcoming modern drama starring Chen Xiao, Li Qing, and Zhang Jiani. On February 24th, it released a 15-second coming soon trailer. As far as I know, the drama hasn't passed review yet, so it might be a while still before it announces a premiere date. According to Baidu, Chen Xiao plays Gao Jialing, the number one scholar in his village. Gao works hard to be a teacher, but unexpectedly fails his college entrance exams. Li Qing plays a fellow villager who encourages Gao in his writing and whom he falls in love with. However, Gao is torn between her and a dancer from Shanghai, played by Zhang Jiani. Life is slated for 40 episodes and will stream on iQiyi. Next up for drama updates, it looks like Justice in the Dark has hit a bit of a hiccup. Justice in the Dark is a Yuku mystery drama that premiered on February 18th. It stars Stephen Zhang and Fu Xingbo, and is an adaptation of the boys' love novel Silent Reading by Priest. So this drama passed review, and then very shortly after that premiered, like hours later. It was very unexpected, with no promo or announcement, which raises a few questions. What raises even more questions is that Yuku recently stopped uploading episodes. Indeed, as of today, it's stuck at episode 8. Has been like this for over a week. By the way, the drama is not yet available on YouTube, which is a bit odd. Steven Zhang is a pretty big drama star, and the drama looks like something that might appeal to international audiences. Fans of the drama have been left befuddled. This blogger hilariously wrote, Usually, I am the one dropping dramas. This time, it's the drama that's dropped me. Other netizens speculate the drama has been suspended, and that's starting to ring true, at least a temporary suspension. But why would that happen? Well, the drama is an adaptation of a boys' love novel, so that's always a sensitive issue in China. As well, it was hit with controversy recently with the whole Rosé incident. Netizens scolded the drama for using a photo of Blackpink's Rosé as a photo of a sex worker. The drama's art department eventually apologized. Whether or not Justice in the Dark will resume uploading episodes is anybody's guess. On top of everything else, netizens are now worried if this will affect the possible airing of other Boys Love adaptations like Immortality and Winner is King. That's it for drama updates. Moving on, a film celebrity hybrid update. Fan Bingbing makes her comeback in the movie Green Knight. When Fan Bingbing's tax scandal hit headlines in 2018, it shocked the Chinese entertainment world. She was, after all, one of the biggest stars in China at the time. There were hints of comebacks in recent years, supporting and guest appearances here and there, but nothing as concrete as this latest one, a starring role in a movie. 
On February 23rd, Fan Bingbing stepped onto the carpet in this number by one of her favorite designers, Christopher Boo. It was the premiere of her movie, Green Knight, at the Berlin Film Festival. Media outlet Asia One quotes the actress as saying, Thanks to my friends from all over the world, everyone's life has its ups and downs. It can be very difficult and hard work at times, but you actually learn a lot of things in the process. Everything is fine now. The biggest challenge is that I haven't acted for five years. I've always wanted to find a story, a script, a character that would resonate with my state of mind. In Green Knight, Fan Bingbing plays a Chinese immigrant who worked as a security guard at an airport in Korea. She meets the green-haired woman, a mysterious and rebellious drug trafficker played by Lee Jo Young. The two embark on a thrilling adventure through Seoul's gritty underworld and eventually develop feelings for each other. Featuring both Mandarin and Korean dialogue, the film is directed by Han Shui and is billed as a Hong Kong-China production. Moving on, celebrity updates now. Lee Tung got quite a few messages of support for her new drama. 32-year-old Lee Tung stars in Warm on a Cold Night, a costume drama which premiered recently. In it, she plays a constable who partners with a member of a rival clan to investigate a strange murder case. On February 24th, Lee Tung shared a bunch of images of herself and character and invited everyone to catch the drama on Aichi. She got quite the response, not just from fans and netizens, but also from friends and colleagues in the industry. The likes of Yang Zi, Yang Yang, Fan Cheng Cheng, Esther Yu, Xu Kai, Bai Lu, Li Xian, and the list goes on, all chimed in to show their support. Seen a few comments in the past couple of days from those who are following and liking Warm on a Cold Night. If you want to check it out, it is available on IQ.com with English subs. Next up, Ellen Rin has an update. According to this recent Sina Entertainment article, his studio has a message for obsessive stalker fans. Absolutely zero tolerance. On the evening of February 24th, Ellen Rin's studio issued a statement saying that several unidentified people have repeatedly entered the 33-year-old actor's residence. These intruders snooped around, took pictures, and loitered, seriously infringing on Ellen's personal privacy. This is the picture Ellen Rin's studio shared. It's not much of a picture, to be honest. Between blurring out the details of Ellen's residence and obscuring the intruders' faces, the picture doesn't really say much. Still, Ellen Rin's studio said they have obtained evidence and warned those involved to stop this behavior. Ellen Rin's studio added that they have zero tolerance for obsessive fan behavior. Ellen is currently filming the costume drama Wu Gengji. He stars in it with Fair Sing and Bam Biju. Lastly, for celebrity updates, Xiao Chan has opened up a new Instagram account. For a few days now, the 31-year-old actor-singer has been sharing pictures from his trip to Milan, where he's attending Fashion Week. He is an ambassador for Gucci and Todd's. His new IG account is xz underscore 1991x, and as of today, he has 430,000 followers. This was his very first post five days ago. His message was simply, Hi, I am Xiao Chan. From my understanding, this is not Xiao Chan's first IG account. He had problems with his previous one. It was hacked or something like that. But now he's back. Meanwhile, back on Weibo, Xiao Chan shared a batch of images of himself enjoying some Sichuan food and the view from his room in Milan. His message was Chuan Chai Yong Yan De Shen, which loosely translates to something like Sichuan food always the best. On that note, it's Tuesday today, so time for another segment of Where's Mark is At. The title of the segment doesn't refer to where I'm at physically, it refers to where I'm at in the dramas I'm following. I'm currently not following any dramas. I recently finished watching Under the Microscope, and as with any drama I finish watching, here are my final thoughts. No spoilers. Under the Microscope premiered on February 9th and aired the last of its 14 episodes on February 19th. It's a short one, and it's available on IQ.com with English subs. Based on a Ma Bo Yong novel of the same name, the drama follows a math genius called Sui Chia Mo. When he discovers that his county has been paying a silk tax for years and all the other counties have not, he strives to get to the bottom of it, but finds all kinds of obstacles in his way. I'll try to keep this one short. I personally enjoyed the drama, but I can see how some maybe could not get past one or two episodes. 
Within the cast theme drama genre, there are a few subgenres, and suffice to say that this subgenre may not appeal to many. The drama is heavy on long, convoluted speeches. I thought they could have been more concise about law, politics, and history. The drama is light on action and even lighter on romance. But the acting's good. Zhang Ruoyun turns in a great performance as a math genius who is probably autistic. So does Wang Yang, who slays it as a smooth-talking and snarky lawyer. The rest of the cast is good too. With dramas like this that is heavy on dialogue and does not use overdubbing, you very quickly get found out if you can't hold your own as an actor. I found the plot to be interesting. Again, you'd have to be somewhat interested in the way things work back in that time period, which was the Ming Dynasty. And apparently the drama is loosely based on real-life events and characters. Government, tax, and especially the court systems all seem to be rather crude and susceptible to manipulation. So I guess part of the fun was figuring out how these guys took advantage of the systems and how they eventually get found out. As of today, the drama has an average 7.8 score from around 72,000 ratings on Douban. If I had to rate it, would give it something a bit lower, 7.2 for me. So that's that. I'll probably pick up another drama by the end of this week. Haven't given any thought about what it will be yet. I'll update on that front next Tuesday. And that's been another segment of Where's Mark Is At. It also brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed the content, do like and subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar more a month, you'll have access to parts like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!